to have you with us so no matter when you're watching where you're watching from welcome my name is Shamari now I'm the online pastor here at Every Nation Faith City and I'm joined today by Reinhard de Goede and we're so excited to be jumping into the word this week before we get into that let's just get all the formalities out of the way so if you're not following us on social media make sure that you're checking out Facebook Instagram YouTube or whatever other ones are currently working we don't know which ones are down or not <laughs> But it just makes sure that you're that you're connected to whatever we're doing, that you're not missing out on any of the older series that we've done or any of the new updates that we're busy with. And then we want to say so thank you for all of you that are giving in this time. Thank you so much for those of you that are giving generously. We know that God honors those who give generously. And thank you so much for taking God's word literally in this season and entrusting him. And if you have a testimony of any amazing breakthroughs that God has given you, please reach out to us. We'd love to hear it. And thank you to those that have already sent your testimony. It's so encouraging. So before we jump into the word, let's just pray over the word, over the seed. And and let's dive into the word together. Lord, we thank you just for the honor that we have. No matter when we are watching this, no matter where we are watching this, to be gathered in your name and to be gathered around your word. Lord, I thank you. Let the words of our hearts and the meditations of our mouths be pleasing unto you. And as we dive into your word, we know that it cannot return void, but it must accomplish what it's sent forth to do. So as we sow, as we listen, Lord, I thank you. Prepare our hearts, prepare our minds for what you want us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Thank you so much, Reinhard, for being with us. I'm excited. So let's dive into the word without any other announcements. I'm excited. So Lord, Last week, if you haven't checked it out, Rian and Andile went through this. this they started going through the I Am statement. Yes. Right? So we had, they did four. They did the first one. They talked about the great I Am and Exodus 3. We yes. went into the I'm the bread of life. I'm the light mm. of the world. And we ended off with I Am the door. And we're picking off on there. We're going to go yes. into the rest of John 10. But I want to pray for us before we start. Awesome. That's perfect. Father, we thank you mm. so much. Father, that we know that we can love you knowing that you are true and good God. Father, I pray that you help us through this word and may we learn something new. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. So one of my favorite preachers right now is Matt Chandler. And I know you give me a lot of stick <laughs> and we joke around, but he makes this good point and we watched that sermon together. I don't know yes. if you remember. So he tells the story. He's talking to a few leaders and he's telling, no, he can't wait to get home. He mm. can't wait to go home. And, you know, just be intimate with his wife, you know, touch her blonde hair, look into her blue eyes. And yes. he starts telling and it might get a bit weird, so I'm not going to go in there. But he eventually stops and he's like, if you know me at all, you'll know that my wife has brown hair <laughs> and brown eyes. And he's like, so it should be, it should be completely strange to you. And it should. And he makes this statement. He says, correct doctrine leads to correct intimacy. Mm, that's so good. And I'll add on it saying that correct doctrine leads to deeper intimacy. You mm, see, Rian last amen. week spoke about how relationship with Jesus starts off by knowing who he is. Yeah, that's good. And while we look specifically at the I am statements, and just so you know, we're going through the book of John, right? And it's mm. an amazing, amazing yes. gospel. And there's no time. In the mm. five weeks, we're going to do this to run through the whole book. Yes. book. So go and read it. Yes. Go read the book of John. And you see that we focus on the seven I am statements for one reason, is that Jesus mm. did a lot of things. So mm. we can look at what he did, how he acted, what his attitude was. But we want to specifically look at what Jesus said about himself. That's so I mean. Good. If you would tell me something about yourself right now, I'll be like, you're being plain and direct. There's, I don't have to look how you're acting. Yes. I'll be like, all right, Shaman Ray told me that he likes chocolate. I'm going to, yes. like, he likes chocolate, right? Mm. And that's why we're looking at who Jesus is. And with mm. that being said, I want you to lead us into the first one we're going awesome. to. Awesome. So the first statement that Jesus opens it up for us is, I am the good shepherd. Yeah. Now we see that we are called the sheep and we are called to follow. And we have a lot of similarities with sheep. <laughs> I mean, especially with the fact that we don't always listen yeah. and that we have to have the shepherd to guide us. And yeah. Jesus so beautifully says this in John 10 verse 7 to 18. It says, so again, Jesus said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who come to me are all who come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. 
The thief only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I came so that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. He is a hired hand and not he who is a hired hand and is not a shepherd, uh, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming, leaves the sheep, flees, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and he cares for nothing of the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep. My own know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father, I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have no and I have other sheep that are not in my fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have the authority to lay it down and I have the authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my father. So before we give over to you, just something that I want to double click on if we can is the thief only comes to steal, kill and destroy. Yeah. The hired hand comes in and and he's just there, but he doesn't take ownership. He just leaves. Yeah. But we see Jesus said that I'm going to take ownership and I'm going to take yeah. that extra step of yeah. responsibility. Yeah. Now, with that being said, um, just just guide us through, through some of the thoughts in this. So we want to focus on two things, right? Yes. Sometimes we look at a statement, especially the I am statements, and I think we have a love-hate relationship mm. with them. And what I mean with them is the, what I mean with that is the following. It's like when Jesus says it is something, we love it. Like example, we just read that he said he is the good shepherd yes. and we love it. We know a good shepherd protects, mm. he leads, he provides, he looks after. There's a lot of good things that we love, but there are certain things that we hate. If we look about it, I want to not only focus, but on the stupidity of the sheep today, yes. like you said, but let's <laughs> rather focus on the love of the shepherd. Mm, so here's so what a good shepherd does. He knows his sheep, right? Mm. John 10 verse 14 says, I'm the good shepherd. I know my own and they know me. Mm. Psalm 139, one to four says, Oh Lord, you have searched me and know me. Mm. You know when I sit down and when I rise up, you discern my thoughts from afar. You searched my out my path and my laying down and you are acquainted with all my ways. Yes. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, the Lord, you know it all together. And Matthew 10 verse 30 says, but even the hairs on your head are numbered. Sure, Secondly, amazing. a good shepherd, a shepherd, he, he sheep know his voice. You know, we mm. see that Jesus speaks the truth and only the truth. Yes. It says also in John, it says, I have other sheep that are not of the soul. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. Mm. Thirdly, a good shepherd lays down his life. And like you said, he takes up the high responsibility not the hired hand the higher responsibility mm. he says i'm the good shepherd and the shepherd down lays down his life for the sheep you see i think we love this statement because we know that jesus is a good shepherd mm. but we hate it firstly because he's he then calls us the sheep mm. but i think some of us and i don't know if you've ever found yourself mm. at this place is we find of this place where we think we're the sheep we understand the analogy mm. jesus is the good shepherd but we sometimes think jesus is the hired hand Yes. We come to a place where we think Jesus is going to run away when the wolf comes. You know, mm. my past is a bit too hectic. Mm. He's going to not stick around. He is not the good shepherd. He is the hired hand. Mm. And it's horrible because we think Jesus is getting paid for this. He's going to, yeah. and when it gets too tough, it's Jesus going to be like, now nah, fam, I'm <laughs> out. <laughs> this is not Bye. a fight. You know, I'm out. And I just want to quickly take a moment and remind us that He's not the hired hand. He's not even a above average. No, he'll stick a bit longer yeah. hired hand. He is the good shepherd. Yeah. And I think I have one question or you have one question you want to ask. Yes. And that's, so where do we get this idea that Jesus is the hired hand or Jesus is the plus one or the, the contractor that was available? <laughs> yeah, and like you earlier said, like he, where do we get the idea that Jesus doesn't want to take all the responsibility? Mm. I think we have sometimes an extremely wrong perspective about mm. what Jesus says. And what I want to tell you in this moment is, and we're gonna, you're going to see as we run through these statements, yeah. it comes down to a simple fact is that... I'm looking at what Jesus said directly. Yes. And he said, I am the good shepherd. He's not the one that's going to run away. Mm -hmm. He is the, we know that in the previous statement, he says, I'm the door. There's, this is who Jesus says he is. Mm -hmm. And Jesus isn't changing. 
Mm. Like he, there's not going to be this yes. one way and another way. And this is going to, you're going to see, it's going to run through all these yes. statements that we are looking at what Jesus said directly. And we're going to take him on his word. And if he says he's the good shepherd, he's going to stick. Mm. I love it. I love it. So that leads us directly into the next statement, which is I am the resurrection and the life. So this is, this statement is really challenging, right? So mm. where we pick off is in John 11. So Jesus and his disciples are on a town not far away. And mm. he gets a message that his friend Lazarus is very ill. Yes. Now, I don't know about you. If I get a message about my friend being ill, I'll I'll want to quickly get there. Yes. But Jesus responds with just a simple statement. He says, the sickness will not lead to death. And he doesn't leave immediately. Mm. Two, three days later, they, he and his disciples go. And we are going to read from John 11 verse 17 where uh, Lazarus already passed on and is already buried so let's pick it up from verse 17 when it says now when Jesus came he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days Bethany was near Jerusalem about two miles off and many of the Jews had come to Mary and Martha to console them concerning their brother so when Martha had heard Jesus was coming she went with she went and met him but Mary remained seated in the house Martha said to Jesus Lord, if you had been here, my brother would have not died. But even um, but even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said, your brother will rise again. Martha said, I know that he will rise again in resurrection on the last day. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet he shall live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Jesus said to him. She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming to this world. Man, that is so powerful. And the two questions we want to ask is, why do we love it and why do we hate it? Right? Mm. We love it because Jesus promised us resurrection, not only physically, yes. but he promises us spiritually. We know that 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The mm. old has passed away and behold, the new has come. We see yes. that resurrection. Yes, we also see, secondly, we see a promise of physical resurrection through Martha saying that, yes, I know that you will rise, rise again on the, res- mm. the resurrection of the last day. But we see this spiritually and physically. So we know there's this promise. I think also we love it because Jesus now gives us life. He gives yes. us his life, not only on the cross, but he gives this life that we read about in John 10, 10 that says, I'll give you life and that in abundance. Like yes. we know that Jesus will give this. So yeah. why do we hate it? I think, first of all, we hate it is because we do not have the power to resurrect ourselves, not well, spiritually so good. or good. physically. That's good. And secondly, we hate it because if Jesus gives us life, there's no life apart from him. Mm. He is the life. You see, I want to read us something. It says, Jesus in this iron statement promised us escape from spiritual death as we are hopelessly doomed to death because of our sin. Sure. Through both the resurrection of our bodies at the end of times, but also right now, some of us has forgotten that only Jesus can resurrect us. And mm. he can, and he will also give us life. So the question that I want to ask you is, am I living the life that Jesus gave me? This life in abundance? It's such a good question, Samurai, because I think we get to a place where sometimes we think that other people or things or situations can resurrect us. Or we come to a place where we have to depend on our own strength. We think rather that we have to depend on our own strength to resurrect us. Mm -hmm. Or maybe some of us have come to a place where we want Jesus, but not the life he's promising. Mm. Or we have Jesus, but we're not experiencing the life. And in this moment, I just want to say, if you ask this question to yourself, you know, where where can I look at my life and know that Jesus is not giving me life is maybe go back to the truth that's settled in your heart. Oh, that's so good. And I, like I said in the beginning, we're going to really keep on bumping back to this. We see that Jesus says he's the resurrection and the life. So if you truly believe that Jesus, what he spoke is true, and it is, mm. then maybe you should ask yourself, maybe I'm not accepting it. Mm. Maybe there's specific situations and allow yourself. You know, a lot of times, and I've had this many a times, Take a moment, just say, Lord, thank you that you're a good God. Lord, I need you to show me where Jesus come show me right now in what area in my life. Um, I remember when I was just, I just got to Christ, someone would explain my Christian life as a house. And sometimes some rooms just haven't experienced that life. Mm -hmm. And Jesus promises us breakthrough. He promises us this life. And that life, yes, we can go into a whole nother sermon Mm -hmm. of what that means. But maybe just come to a place where we allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you in this moment. If you need to pause pause the video, do that. But speak to you in this moment. Where can I experience this life that Jesus does promise? Mm -hmm. So the next statement that we're going to go into is, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And we're reading it from John 14, where it says, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. 
If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may also be. And you know the way where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Which sounds like a meme. Um, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you will have known my Father also. For from now on, you do know him and you have seen him. This is such an amazing, powerful moment because this is another point where we can see the Trinity in action, where we can see the relationship that the Son has with the Father and that they are equal in this, that the Son is pointing towards the Father and as as the Father is pointing towards the Son. And it's just so beautiful. And I I think why this uh, challenges us so much is like this, this, he calls himself, Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. So in a moment, we can just break it down. It says, Jesus calls himself the, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus didn't say that he'll show us the way. Yes. He is the way. He didn't say that he would teach us the truth. He said that he is the truth. Mm. And lastly, he didn't offer us, offer us secrets to life or a different life. He said, I am the life. Yes. You see, we love this statement because if we're wondering about and we're confused and don't know where to go, Jesus is the way. Yes. We love it because we're confused a lot of times and we don't know what to think or where to go and Jesus is the truth. Mm. Lastly, we're dead inside and we don't know if we can go on. Jesus is the life. Mm. That's why we love it. But I think we hate it for a reason, three reasons. And the first one is someone telling us the, that we're lost. I don't know if you like that. Yeah, that's not a fun thing. No. Especially if you're driving and you're like, you are lost. Like, and let me no. just add on it. Let's say someone tells you you're lost, lost and then tells you the way to go. Mm. I have to be honest. I've been, sh- I don't know, mm. I'm just going to let you just yeah. get right. So secondly, <laughs> it's one of those mm yeah. moments. <laughs> and secondly, I think sometimes we're very arrogant and we think that we can find out the truth or mm. determine truth on our own ways. Mm. And there's a whole thing that you can watch about what does truth mean, but we cannot determine truth on that our own. That is very true. So, so lastly, we hate it because just like all the other statements, especially this I am statement forces us to depend on Jesus as the way that we need to actually give up control knowing that we cannot find our way. Mm. And just before we go on and end over the last thing, I just want to stop one moment longer at the I am the way, right? Yes. And it, it hit me. I was uh, I was doing some research on this and, and it's a simple question or the simple statement that says, if Jesus is the way, you cannot get yourself home. Oh, and here's so what good. I mean with that is uh, we try to get ourselves home by being a better person, doing things better, uh, you know, doing good things. And mm. not that that isn't important. We know that the scripture encourages us to do that, mm. but that just, that's not the way home. Yes. That's that's definitely, you know, it's not the, it's the fruit. It's not the root. We mm. know that we need to be rooted in Christ. And I think we come to a place where, we try to get ourselves home. And that's mm. the question I know that you, I see it on the notes. You want to ask yeah. me, what's the question? And the question for, for, for all of us right now is, am I trying to get myself home? And Am I trying to yeah. be the, the road or, or the way myself? And before I answer that, I want to read a description. It says Psalm 119 verse 105. And it's a very popular scripture. Mm. And it says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Mm. So yes, Shamaray, I think not only people watching this, but me and you, we've tried yes. many a times mm. to, like you said, determine our own path, mm. create, I don't know, take a short left. You know? <laughs> yes. We've tried to determine the way so many times. We've tried to get ourselves home. Mm. Um, more than once yes. and i honestly can just testify and we spoke about this as well mm. is that when we use the word as our lamp yes. to my feet it will light my path mm. so may this be the encouragement that mm. if you're trying to find your way home there is a way mm. like you don't have to create yes. one and the way sometimes i think we complicate it but it's very simple your word is a lamp and may that word be the lamp to our feet yes and let's end off with the final I am statement, which yeah. is I am the true vine. Yeah. In John 15, verse 1 to 5, we see that Jesus says, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Yeah. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. 
already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. We are useless without the power of God. Yeah. We are absolutely useless. Yeah. And it is doing something in our own power yeah. creates religion. It creates this yeah. death where it's like where we separate the physical written word from the spirit of God. We find this absolute confusion in people mm. living in law, people living in condemnation mm. where the heart of God is reconciliation. Yeah. And for us to just abide, to be present yeah. with God. This is such a powerful scripture. I mean, John 15 is one of the shortest chapters in the book. Still mm -hmm. one of my favorite pieces of scripture. And it's so dense, right? Mm -hmm. And honestly, when I read this, the first thing I thought is, what is there to hate? Yes. I mean, we know, we love it. But I mean, I haven't found out what to hate yet. But it says, Jesus calls himself not only the vine, but the true vine. Mm -hmm. That's what we love. We know that he's the true vine. He is truth. Yes. And he is the true vine. Secondly, we know that if he is the vine, the father is the wine dresser. Now, a wine dresser knows exactly the needs. He knows how to manipulate manipulate or that's a terrible word i'm yes. gonna use a bit on but i, I worked in a, in my in my first years of my status i worked with a farmer that does vineyards and he says that i am in control and i know what's best to help them produce the yes. much fruit and that's exactly how the father looks at us he wants us to be the best to glorify him that's and then so thirdly good. we saw in many of the pictures why we love it in many pictures of the relationship with god and his people the vine and the branch emphasizes complete dependence and the need for constant mm. connection and don't we see that tonight today mm. complete dependence only comes from making not only accepting jesus as your savior but making yes. him lord and secondly the constant connection jesus ascends to heaven and sends us holy spirit yes so we do have that constant connection mm. and that dependence and while i was reading through it i realized why we hate it mm. and we hate it because if jesus is the true vine we are gonna be pruned yes and I think if you've been in church for a while or if you've never been in church, pruned in this sense is that you're going to be shaped into something that you might not find pleasant. I don't know if you've been pruned. It's not fun. <laughs> no, it's not fun. And and it's tough because the second thing we know is that if if you do not produce fruit, you're not part of the wine. Yes. So that that's where I want you to understand that if we accept that he is the true vine, we mm. will get pruned to produce fruit. So my question to you is, and this question that we all can answer for ourselves yeah. is, are we avoiding the statement because we know we will get pruned? No matter how we live, like Jesus said, that even if you do produce, yeah. that you get pruned. Yeah, I, yeah, I think a lot of us, including myself, we find mm. ourselves at this place because the pruning has maybe even started for some of us. It's continuous pruning. Mm. And we go like, oh boy, oh boy, I don't like this. This is not fun. And we come to this place where I, I think you need to challenge yourself and just ask this question. Am I going to accept that Jesus Christ is the true vine and he's going to prune me because all i can offer you at this moment is what the word of god says is that you will produce fruit yes that's so awesome would you would you mind praying for us i closing? would love it so wherever you are let's just take a moment and close eyes holy spirit we thank you that you are present with us in this moment i ask holy spirit as these questions popped up father may we now jesus may we look to you knowing that you are the truth and I ask that as we ask these questions to ourselves, may you reveal, may we not be disobedient or not listen. May we really open our ears and listen what you have to say. And may in this, may we grow in deeper relationship with you as we know that as we get to know you better, we can love you better. We can have, be better intimate with you, deeper intimate with you. And we pray that in Jesus name. Amen. 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 So let's just quickly summarize what we spoke about. Number one, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. And the question that we have to ask ourselves is, where do I have the view that Jesus is the hired hand or the consultant instead of the shepherd? Second is, I am the true, I am the resurrection and the life. And the second question that we ask of that is, is Jesus the one giving me life in this? Am I receiving the life Jesus gave and living in it? Third one is, I am the way, the truth and the life. Then we have to ask ourselves, am I the one trying to get myself home? Am I following Jesus and following the road that he has given me in scripture? And then the last one is, I am the true vine. Are we avoiding this because we're so afraid of getting pruned? Are we saying, no, Lord, use me. 
use me in the season yeah. mold me into the form that you want yeah. and let's take this commission literally so if you know of someone that needs to hear this word tag them in the comments share this word with them you never know what the power is of one inspiring word from from jesus that he loves us and that there's a message of hope for us all that we can live in this redemption life and then be sure to reach out to us if you want prayer if you if you heard this and prayed this prayer along with Raina, and you want someone to just take that extra step with you reach out to us right now the info is available on the screen thank you so much for being a part of the book of john with us and remember take some time this week whenever you're watching this go through the other videos make sure that you're diving into the word for yourself and be blessed and we'll see you next time